All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can share, like, subscribe, or do whatever you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break podcast, the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. And our guest's main place where he goes for the best in conversation in Lakers basketball, LakersBall.com, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, so thankful. I, I reached out to a ton of places as far as Lakers fan sites. You know I'm always hanging out with the crew from Lakerholics.com, but there's more than just the great folks at Lakerholics.com out there. There's so many Lakers fans out there in the world that I want to connect with and hear their thoughts on the Lakers and the NBA coming up. I had to reach out to more great places. And one of the great communities that I got a chance to reach out to, I just mentioned, is LakersBall.com. And this guy just reached out, and I'm so thankful for it. He is a good guest today, and I want to bring him on right now. It is Joe Soro. Joe, thank you so much for being on the show today. It is truly appreciated. Uh, thank you for having me. This has been a long time coming. Uh, I've have been on the radio in probably a decade, uh, but I still wasn't doing specific radio, something tailored to obviously something I love more than than anything in sports, which is the LA Lakers. Uh, Lakers ball is a is, is by far the best fan forum I've ever been on. Uh, they're truly uh, the community is truly knowledgeable and just fantastic and, and, and just kind of accepting the different personalities and the different communication that kind of comes through when you're when you're dealing with <laughs> random people on the internet. And uh, I, I'd say I'm pretty I'm pretty random sometimes myself. I, I know that I do kind of you know project that sometimes. But uh, again, back back to the to, to the to the you know the the main subject here. This off season was, God, I I had a feeling on which direction they were going to go, uh, and it and it turned out that it, it was exactly which way they were going to go. Uh, they ran into a problem towards the end, like most of the teams that were you know supposed to win it, and that was obviously the injuries. And in order to maintain the health situation on a title team, you have to have enough talent to kind of make up for the time missed by your, your top guys. And when AD went out, even though the defense didn't suffer in terms of its you know ratings, AD, I don't know if a lot of people really – I mean, I, I watch the game. I actually, you know, pay attention to the actual players and what they're doing on court. A lot of times – as an observer, you're just kind of watching the ball go in the hoop. No, I actually pay attention to when AD's playing defense or when Alex Caruso was playing defense. And one of the one of the times I really remember it vividly was in game six of the 2020 finals, right after they had lost that game five that, that I was, you know, hoping that we could, you know, I remember after that game, I was just so exhausted from the emotion of the game. I... I didn't know what to expect in game six. And after the first quarter and watching Anthony Davis literally guard three guys, it didn't matter if it was a guard, a forward, a center. He was, he looked like Troy Palomalo in his prime. He was covering everybody. And in watching that, you, you, you realize why these guys are stars, the real stars. And, when that is not there, you saw what happened in the Phoenix series, okay? He had a bad game in game one, which that's the only knock with AD is he, he, he tends to kind of, I don't want to say he takes the game off, but his focus falters sometimes. But he doesn't man, bring it every game. No, he doesn't. It's not a 24-7 thing with him. And it's not like he's, you know, it doesn't look like he's not motivated. It's just weird. I don't even know how to explain it. But as soon as he he was on in game two and three, Phoenix had no shot. They couldn't do jack crap. So, again, with the ability to 
bring in someone like Russell Westbrook, who's another star, who's still relatively young. Not you're not bringing in Charles Barkley at 37. If AD and LeBron stay healthy, and again, LeBron's situation, I, I, I he didn't get hurt because he was old. He got hurt because somebody landed on his leg, and maybe the maybe the the healing process you can factor into the age, but. LeBron was going to win the MVP had he not gotten injured. So I want to see Vogel hopefully spread this out a little bit. Let Westbrook kind of, if you want to let him go do his triple-double thing during the regular season and let LeBron kind of sit back and hopefully play only 25, 26 minutes a game, then the, then the Westbrook thing will end up being a, a, a huge benefit, and it's very likely they're going to end up winning the title, regardless of how good the Nets are. Milwaukee, again, even with all the stuff that went on, if AD had just stayed healthy, I think the Lakers would have won a title because of everybody else falling over. I would tell you right now that, and I've said this on the show before, that if AD, who, who got hurt in the second quarter when the Lakers were only down one and actually had the previous game, you saw them laughing it off and they were mocking Jay Crowder and you saw LeBron schooling him and all that, that fun game that we saw. And the Lakers had a two games to one lead. And if AD had not gone down, I mean, they would have won that series. And they would have yeah. mo most likely won the Western Conference Championship because you saw the path that was taken by Phoenix. That same path would have probably been easier made by a healthy LeBron and AD. Uh, or at least, I don't know, not, hell, not healthy a LeBron, but a healthy enough LeBron and a fully healthy AD or close to it anyways. But need, need I digress? I mean, we probably would have seen – Kevin Durant had his shoe size been a little bit smaller, been there in the finals, and also if they had a healthy team, it should have been Brooklyn versus the Lakers, but we didn't get that, and that was very unfortunate. But I agree with you on that. I thought they definitely had the finals if they if AD didn't get hurt because they all the momentum was on their side, and unfortunately that wasn't meant to be the case. But getting Russell Bre getting Russell Westbrook in the off season, obviously the big coup for the Lakers. I've said this on the show that I don't think it's about the regular season because I think the regular season, again, it's all about staying healthy, limiting the number of minutes for LeBron and AD, letting Russell Westbrook coordinate with the offense, getting adjusted, getting used to it. The playoffs, I think that's where a lot of people like myself kind of worry about the fit aspect because if you remember in the bubble, the second round of the playoffs, the Lakers versus Houston, how did the Lakers – go ahead and guard Houston and how did they go ahead and, and you know, what what prompted that you know after that game one loss that turnaround of four straight games and one of the strategies that they employed was letting Russell Westbrook shoot and as much as we love him as a rebounder as an initiator of offense as a guy who's going to increase the transition by a lot who does a great job of passing obviously leading the league and assists several times over having the triple doubles four out of five years of the past I'm still worried about the shooting because statistically he's one of the worst outside shooting individuals of all time. Does that bother you or does that concern you at all in regards to a playoff fit? No, it's not going to bother the team. Number one, uh, Lakers have really never won a title shooting lights out. Uh, where he's going to benefit is is when, when they need to run the fast break, which is what really, in my, from my watching the last couple of years is what separated them from everybody. Well, that's once, why they won the bubble defense. Yeah. Once they, yeah. Transition. Once they ran one, once they one, And the other thing with the bubble is the bubble was a, was the most challenging time mentally for, for let's say a, a professional team, right? Yes. These guys are used to doing whatever the heck they want. They own the, their world is their oyster. They can, get any meal they want at any time. They can get any person to come see them anytime they want. They have all these things that they're so used to. And it just seemed like the combination of, you know, determination by the Lakers and the fact that, you know, the title for them was more important than the extracurricular activities. It, 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 it made it easier for them because I thought their run, uh, the first three rounds was – relatively easy even though i i think houston could have been a threat but i find it hard to believe in it it's funny how you westbrook is talked about in that houston series 
How about we talk about James Harden and how he practically quit? Not I shouldn't say quit. I'm sorry. He he did he didn't seem motivated in the last two games in that series, especially game five. I was just like, is James just he's not I, even- I agree with you on that, but I will say Frank Vogel, who was a master on the defensive side of the ball, he planned out a great strategy against that Houston team, which concerned trapping double teaming at times Harden to get the ball out of his hands. And uh, like I said before, they put it a lot into Westbrook's hands and dared him to shoot quite often. In that well, Westbrook's his strong suit is not to shoot. Yeah, from beat. That's not that's not why they brought him to L.A. No, they, I, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they brought him to L.A. because it, for two reasons. Number one, he was the only attainable star left. Right, you're not going to get Bradley Beal. You're not going to go get Giannis. You're not going to get. Jimmy Butler, you're not going to get any of these guys. So let's be realistic here. And I think I had spoken about this before this even happened on Lakers ball. I said, we need a third guy. Who it's going to be, I don't know. But it's a really short list, if not maybe one guy, at least that came to mind, that they have even one iota of a shot. Because that contract was a benefit in getting him. Because Washington's sitting there going, you know, we can save 41, 47 on this guy, shift it a little bit of it to maybe some young guys. You know, if they decide they want to trade KCP, Kuzma, uh, Harold later or whatever, you know, Harold's only got one left on his contract anyways. So I'm like, you know, for them, it, it was a financial decision. And that, again, is how businesses work in sports, too. I mean, shoot, you saw it even in baseball. Look at Trey Turner and, and Matt Scherzer. You're sitting there going, what the hell? Uh, to me, I, I I know who those guys are. Obviously, Scherzer, I know. I know Trey Turner. I was actually surprised they were getting rid of Trey Turner. I was like, wait a minute, we're getting Trey Turner? I'm a huge Dodger fan. And I'm going, oh, I know why they're getting rid of him after the dust settled. I'm like, this guy's going to make $300 million. They can't pay that. Well, same situation with Westbrook. They're not going to win anything with him and Bradley Beal. Hey, might as well get young and maybe get a couple of uh, draft picks and do all that. And it's not one of those guys that, you know, it's just, it's, it's just not – they don't want him, really. They, it, it, this, Washington's been able to recoup almost everything that they lost in the John Wall yeah. trade. Yeah. yeah, so the, yeah. yeah. It was a brilliant financial move. It's very similar to kind of how also the Gasol, Kwame Brown thing. And – Again, one of the things I want to stress, and you and I talked about this, obviously, this is our first show together. It's one thing that I want to really start stressing. If this is going to be something we're going to be doing and hopefully becomes more popular, which is obviously the point, want to make, you know, grow it as big as we can here, is we really need to explain things to the general public, the general sports fan, especially in this era, how things work and why teams do things that might not make sense from a talent standpoint, because I think some of us are still stuck in that. Oh, we traded uh, a, a pack of cigarettes for, you know, a third star, or they'll say things like they're building a super team, but then say that Carmelo is washed up. Okay. Hold on a second. How could it be a super team? If he's washed up that you can't have both. That doesn't make any sense. You know, but most of the talk shows and most of the radio shows and most of whatever shows, the only thing they ever talk about these days, I don't even watch the first take and all those. Once in a while, I'll skim through it. But all they're talking about is, is LeBron better than Michael Jordan? Every other day, it's the same stupid stuff. Is Westbrook going to make the Lakers better? I mean, really? This is what all these Disney billion, trillion dollar companies, this is how they prepare? Asking lame questions, asking the same question? Why is Russell Westbrook not going to make make it work? Because he can't shoot. He's not in L.A. to make him shoot. He's there to supplement LeBron's, hopefully, two, three years that's left. Because he's still 32. And he didn't look like he slowed down last year. So unless he gets hurt, it's not likely he's going to lose this for another at least couple of years. Am I, am I right? Or am I wrong? I mean, no I'm watching more- him play. Well, no one is more competitive than Westbrook. Absolutely. No one has more of the drive. No one has more of the initiative than him. Uh, I mean, li- like you said, I mean, this should increase substantially 
you know, to where it was in the in the championship level in the bubble. They're rebounding and also the physicality, but also the transition game, which I thought was sorely lacking last year. A lot of it part of the due to the either what would you could say it's the injuries, but also Dennis Schroeder, even though he's a quick and fast individual by nature, he never liked to push the ball up the court. And that was something I think that was truly missing that transition game from the Lakers this past season. Yeah, the problem with Schroeder was uh, he was distracted. Uh, I don't mind his attitude. A lot of people in general, they don't like guys that are kind of, I don't know, uh, they, they have their own way of communicating, right? They have their own way, their own values, you know. He has his own value. He has his own way of communicating. And that never bothered me. That never bothered me that he was kind of, you know, if you saw when he got fouled hard, he, you know, kind of come up and, you know, he's like, you know, got an attitude and you probably shouldn't, but that's just kind of his personality. The problem with Schroeder in the end was he was thinking about the offseason while the game was still going on. And I and you know this because what was he uh, last two games? Two for 13? Two, yeah. two for 23? One of the games he didn't make a shot? So if you're going to bet on yourself, and that's the question, too, you're asking, he bet on himself – and lost. I don't consider this betting on yourself. You don't bet against 21 and 5.9. Had he performed better in the playoffs, even if they'd still lost, I would almost guarantee you he would at least have gotten a three-year 15 per deal. But it was his attitude, his lack of performance, the fact that he is limited, even at that 21 number, the fact that Rob Palenka game 21 should have, you know, again, back again, this is something we want to teach the sports listener. It's not about the 21, especially in the NBA. Salary matches is a lot of the business. It's very likely Schroeder would not have been a Laker anyways next year. He would have been traded. And yeah. maybe we end up keeping Kuzma and we throw in Schroeder. Shru- Shru- I don't know. You know, there was five teams in that trade. I didn't read it until yesterday. You know, I knew there were going to be five, but I didn't actually read the details. And actually, I was surprised. We found I found out we had a, another second round pick, which, again, guys, I'm going to teach you this in case guys don't know. They don't explain this. You know, Wojnarowski and all those guys, uh, they don't they don't explain the details sometimes. Second round picks are nice fillers for trades. And as a bonus, the Lakers, in my in my watching them for the last thirty years, are the greatest NBA franchise when it comes to picking second round picks, by far. No one picks better people in the second round than than the Lakers. I'm Nick Van Exel. Look at THT. I mean, I got name you a hundred other one other ones, but you know we don't have a lot of time. Point is, they got every angle on point and. The guys that they got after, Kendrick Nunn, I didn't know he was available until I think a couple hours before he signed. I didn't know. Had I known, like, he was even an option, I'd be like, go get him. I saw him play in the finals against uh, 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 when we played Miami. I was like, man, this guy's got skills, and he's mean. I'm, I'm 43. I'm used to Kobe. I'm used to Jordan. I'm used to Charles Barkley. I'm used to mean a-holes. The reason why Chris Paul and guys like Russell Westbrook kind of are that guy that people kind of, eh, is because they're like that too. They're, they're, they're that, that bridge between the old generation and one now, which is basically kind of like, you know, like LeBron. LeBron's more of a nice guy. Uh, Durant, I don't really – Durant – Durant's a whole different subject. Durant was fine before he left uh, Oklahoma City. After he got berated for going the easy way route, his whole personality changed. And it has really nothing to do with uh, a generational thing. I think he's just angry all the time now because maybe in the back of his mind, he, he, he probably telling himself, maybe I shouldn't have went to Golden State. Um, and now he's trying to make up for it with the Nets. But anyways, uh, the point is w- the Lakers are, in, 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 in the, in, as far as their health, it's really the only thing that can hold them from winning next year. There's no way they're losing if those guys are healthy. No way. So, so that's, that's 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 what I wanted to lead in as far as you're talking about a championship for the run right now because Vegas, here in Vegas, 
it's flip flop back and forth. It started out with Brooklyn Nets getting the early lead, and then also all of a sudden that when the Westbrook transaction was made, and I saw them about even money with both of them here, depending on the casino. But now the Brooklyn Nets have peaked a little bit ahead, although still four to one rate for the Lakers right now. That I mean, that's still heavily odds. They're they're second to uh, second odds right now to win the championship behind Brooklyn. They they, so. they peak. They started peaking because of Durant's performance in the Olympics. Yeah, well, that's that's true. But, but the Westbrook, the Westbrook, uh, what the trade? I will tell you that the numbers did go up for the Lakers. Oh well. no, no, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. Again, Westbrook is exactly the guy that they had a shot at getting, and if they win it next year, this entire Palenka, LeBron era is solidified a hundred percent. Right now, it's probably ninety nine percent because they already won a title. But you'll always kind of hear the bubble thing, COVID, and, you know, things like that. But in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's always been it's always been that, where multiple titles, a second title kind of gives you a little bit more credit, you know? Well, the AD trade, for however many assets we gave up, we've already won, or won the trade. We got a world championship. No, no, out I, don't of know, I don't know. That, that, that trade. Why not? Yeah, no, well, anybody that says that trade was anything going – but I'm just saying it's a big win already for the Lakers. Oh no, no, no! That's what I'm saying. Is is anyone yeah. who says anyone who says anything that in terms of them oh. getting a better deal is no? Nah. I'm, and I agree. With you. I'm saying I'm yeah, saying the Lakers even, won that deal, and happened. now it's just and now it's even just gravy, it, and now yeah. it's just gravy even, for the Lakers because they absolutely now have, yeah right. No, no, it, it, they they won the trade based off the title. Yeah. But again, if you're an observer like me, again, I, I'm, I try not to wear the Laker goggles. 24 7 i i am and i'm not obnoxious i mean i guess that's all subjective but the point is i knew i know who brandon ingram is i know who lonzo ball is i know who these guys are uh hart josh hart i know who these guys are even though they're all stars or they got paid a good amount of money or they're good bench guys anthony davis is a generational player you you that guy was the guy was putting up sometimes forty and twenty for like a week or like two weeks or like three weeks sometimes fifty and twenty I saw sometimes, um, and he's a brilliant defender. I mean, you got the he's great, you know. So I don't, I don't, I never was ever upset about that trade even at the beginning. And even if they hadn't won a title, it's, it's still a better trade. Um, but again. In the end, we're Laker fans. There's going to be more demand here. So being realistic about the situation too, why do the three-point percentages drop as soon as they wear Laker gold? Well, Laker gold is very heavy. It's an extremely heavy jersey. So, this, <laughs> you know, Glenn Rice in 2000 struggled. And I used to watch Glenn Rice not even hit the rim sometimes in games. So you, you want some role player guy to not kind of feel his backside a little tighter, and then you get the playoff time. And I mean, every round is worse and worse and worse. All that matters in the end in L.A., the Lakers, I should say, is stars and timely shots. That's how we won our title. We didn't have... Steph Curry, Clay Thompson's. We didn't have any of that crap. Okay. Stars and timely shooting. Timely shooting. Heck, Robert Ori could go to Hall of Fame as the greatest timed shooter in, in the history of sports. <laughs> he was just show you he'll just show you his seven rings. Yeah. Everywhere he, he went. I remember in 1995, I was asking my dad, God rest his soul. I I, I I was watching the 95 finals then basically after they won that for those first two games in Orlando. I was like, they're going to sweep these guys. I asked my dad, I said, hey, do you think Robert Ory might win the MVP in this series? He's like, no, man, it's going to give it to Hakeem. There's no way. They're not there without Hakeem. I go, this guy's not missing shots. He has a, He looks like John Paxson in 91, in the 91 finals, which I, even as a 13-year-old, I wanted to fly to Chicago and just choke him. And... In the end, again, the results, and again, this is this is for information and life too, guys. 
the only thing that matters in life, and of course, being a good person and not ripping people off, right? That's a precursor, is results. And the result for the Lakers franchise, at least let's say in the last 30 years that I've been watching, is stars, timely shooting. And right now, they have three stars. Two of them are in their prime. This is not Barkley, Pippen, Hakeem. I keep hearing that too. This is not the Houston Rockets in the late 90s. This is not Carl Malone, Gary Payton, Shaq, and Kobe. Okay? And even that team, there's a lot of things why they, there's a lot of reasons why they didn't win that title in 04. It had nothing to do with age. It just bad luck and Shaq and Kobe just not coming together. This team, if they're healthy, are going to win the title next year, even if Brooklyn is healthy. That's my feeling on it. I'll tell you what, it's been great talking to you so far, and there's still a lot more to come. Once again, I'm on with Joe Sorrell. You can find him as Ox1947. Where else? At LakersBall.com. You got to go ahead and be part of the conversation there. Some great forums right there for you. Great topics they're always talking about, and you know they're always talking Lakers at LakersBall.com. Joe, great to have you here again. Wanted to ask you about the additions that they added. And I know we already went to, obviously, you and I both have just just truly just welcomed Kendrick Nunn. I wish he was 6'5", but outside of that, I mean, a guy who can play not on both ends of the floor, really happy that he's here. Someone who I'm hoping will, will they will put into the starting lineup because I'd love to see him as the guard opposite Russell Westbrook. But, again, that's going to be up for Frank Vogel and the staff to decide. I, I actually, I actually have, have been – Wondering if they will put him at the two. Well, they, you know, when you sign a guy to the deal, because you remember, he is one of the few individuals that does not is not there on a the minimum. So maybe there was a guarantee of him starting off the season in the starting lineup. I don't know. I mean, obviously that's just speculation, but maybe along with that, there's an expectation if he was able to sign for more money somewhere else, maybe he's with the Lakers with certain guarantees like they did make for Andre Drummond when he was signed up. And we all know how that went, but we won't go too much in that. <laughs> well, again, it's, it's, yeah, absolutely. No, it, it, here's, here's the two lineups. I'm going to, I think we're going to see. Sure. Sure. Obviously Anthony Davis will be the crunch time center, but as the season goes and as the beginning of the game goes, I really believe it's either going to be Gasol or Howard to start. Um, unless they find another center, it's just those two right now, right? Uh, AD will start at the four. LeBron will be the three. You know, he can pretty much be anything, really. None at the two, and then obviously Westbrook with the ball. And then there's going to be this interchangeable – again, the NBA, there's really no positions anymore in the NBA. It's, yeah. it's, it's very fluid. But crunch time, I'm going to be curious to see – Crunch time for sure, it's going to stay. There's going to be like a Westbrook kind of maybe going in between one and two. LeBron at the four and then AD at the five. And then if if Carmelo continues his best shooting at the uh, from the three line from last year, I actually – If he was, shoots 42% from Yeah, the if three he shoots line. 42%. And, the th- again, the thing is with, with, with Melo is – we already know what, and, and that's without even what last year without even Westbrook. So now it's probably even going to be even more. We know that there are going to be guys that are going to get open shots. If he doesn't miss those open shots like Kyle Kuzma did, I'm sorry, Kyle, but that's probably why you're in Washington now. If he makes at a, those at a 41% clip, I don't even know if they're going to lose more than a game a week or every couple of weeks. There's just not, it's just too much. There's too much talent there there's too much guys that and Carmelo is a he's not going to be one of those guys that's mentally going to get you know down he, he if he gets an open shot I think he's probably going to make it more often than not so and in, where Kyle I think might uh I just think again it's it, this thing is such a huge mental game and then when you add the Laker thing it just you def, you just never know if he's who can handle it and who can't and most can unfortunately it's just, it's just the way it is it's the Lakers, to me, are bigger than any team in the, in, the, in, the, in the country, even bigger than the Yankees. The Yankees have have been down too long 
I think to be number one, like they probably were for, 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 for a long time. I think the Lakers are the standard right now in the country, especially in North America. And then of course, as you get around the world, you're, you know, you, you have to factor in, you know, the soccer franchises, but as far as American sports, I don't think there's any team that's bigger than the LA Lakers. Well, you talked about being in the spotlight and, and players that when they come here, role players, especially not maybe doing quite as well as they did in other places. But that's the one thing I want to ask you, because a lot of the additions to the roster this year are welcome back individuals. Like, for instance, you got Dwight Howard. You've got Trevor Reza coming back. You've got Kent Bazemore coming back. You've got Wayne Ellington coming back. You've got a, guys, a lot of guys there that are familiar what it's like to be like in the L.A. spotlight, so to speak. Does, you think that's going to help all those individuals because maybe it'll give them a chance to understand they already know what they're getting themselves into and maybe they can go ahead and prosper in this situation? I think the reason why Dwight didn't come back last year was because he was a non-factor in the finals. He was important in the Denver series. He was important in, uh, uh, for a few games before then too, but especially in the Denver series. The problem with the White's game is it's just not good for a team like a Miami Heat. It won't be good either with a, a New Jersey Net. I'm sorry, New Jersey Nets. Uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. It would be, um, let's say, against a Joel and so you're, Philadelphia. But that's what they did, but, but but I think the reason why they did bring him back was because of how bad their position was, that position was last year. And they're like, look, let's get some stability here at the minimum. Let's bring Dwight back. He, he is acclimated. He's won a title here. He wants to be here. You know, a lot of times – you got to pay attention to those kind of things. Like when somebody wants to be with you, you know at least you're going to get the effort, right? Sometimes that player that's available could be just as, you know, valuable as a talented player who doesn't want to be there. So the contrast between Schroeder and Dwight, let's say, okay? Schroeder has more talent than Dwight right now. He's 27. He's in his prime. But did he really want to be there? Didn't, his performance didn't show it. His decision-making obviously didn't show it. And it ended up costing the Lakers in the end. You know, granted, AD got hurt, but he didn't even try to help. It was like he was, once the AD went in, it was like it was over. It was like the, the everything drained out. There was nothing left. And then here's Dwight. I, he, he what, the free agency started, what, 12 one And he was wanting to be, a, he was a Laker the second they let him come in. You know, once they cleared out that first thing with Westbrook, it was, okay, go get Dwight. Dwight's like, yeah, 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 I'm coming. Press conference, he's happy. You can tell him. You can tell. You, you're looking at him doing the, 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 the interview. He's like, man, this guy really missed not being in L.A. And right now they have Dwight. They have uh, Nunn, which I like the athleticism there. Obviously, you have A.D., you have LeBron. Um THT is going to be interesting. Now we're going to have to go back to that pressure, okay? Now he's getting paid. He's getting paid a lot of money. He was picked over the most popular player in L.A. since Kobe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have not – I had not seen – it took a minute. It, it really didn't sink in until he left. The stuff I was reading and seeing, I'm like, my God, this this city loved Alex Caruso. They did. I mean, they love him. And and by the way, the Lakers made the right call. THT can come go in between the one and the two. He has ball handling skills. He's 20. He's their draft pick. He's in, in the grand scheme of things, I think in the end could be more talented. Plus, in the, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's yeah. still at, at a nice yeah, enough contract yeah. where it can be traded. But you got to be, be you, you know, look, you got to be, you, you, you can have some emotion in this, but you have to be smart, okay? Caruso, he was great as where he was. I'm so happy he, he, he's where he is now. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to end up coming back anyways. I just have a feeling he will, he'll end up coming back. But 
they made the right call. They went with a guy that's got a little bit more skill set that they that they need. That's more, I'd say, important in this particular NBA. He he's going to get better at shooting if he stays, you know, within. He doesn't get crazy and 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 you know enjoys his money too much. This, if he continues to train and want to get better, he's going to get better at shooting. He's going to get better handling the ball. He's twenty years old. He's already shown that he can handle the pressure at 20 years old and in L.A. So how is it not going to get better possibly in two to three years? Imagine an NBA player's prime really hits between 25 and 27. So this guy still has another five to seven years. Who knows what he can be? So they made the right call on that. None, THT, uh, the as far as the young guys, you know, again, I'm I'm, I'm kind of paying attention to more of those guys, uh, guys like Ariza and Kent Baysmore. If they can help, I, how do you not know? How do you not love Ariza? Uh, you know, I was very happy when he came back, but the the basketball part of me was like, mm, maybe ten minutes a game, maybe you know, a swan song for him. Cool, that that'll that'll be nice. But my yeah, go ahead. Well, somebody that we haven't talked about that could surprise for the team and could be a nice benefit for the team long, you know, if he's signed to a long-term contract after this season is Malik Monk because Malik Monk, you know, is an individual that for the first time started to show some of his value that, you know, he had a high place in the draft, shot 40% from three point for Charlotte and came off the bench gave them some nice offense, still a little bit of a, an adventure defensively. So we'll have to see how it plays out from there, but he's someone with the right breaks one way or the other could earn some time on the team and could have enough of a skill set to get himself a, a place in the permanent rotation for the Los Angeles Lakers. Malik, Malik Monk. Could. I didn't say did. Yeah, say. here's here's my assessment on 23-year-old high draft pick players. Now, things have changed the last 10 years. Before 10 years ago, if you busted, you usually didn't come back. You, you didn't become a Kyle Lowry, you know? You didn't become a Chauncey Billups. It's Those are very rare in the NBA. The one thing about basketball in the NBA, you know who makes it and who doesn't pretty quickly. You don't see a lot of guys that just stink for four or five years and all of a sudden become amazing. It's just not not typical. Malik can do one of two things. He can pull that, you know, exhausted cliche out and say, I have a chip over my, on my shoulder and I'm going to show everybody. Sure. I've heard that before. Or he can comp- and, and then do something about it. Or he can just... Show him what's, show what he's shown before, which is a high draft pick that's not really providing anything, even with his amazing athleticism. So I'm I'm gonna wait that one out. I'm gonna see how that works. If he lives up to his talent, oh man, it's a different, it's a change. Because again, 23, the NBA man, that 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 age thing. You know, these guys on on. It always cracks me up, the cliche thing, especially if I'm when you're 43, you, you, you start talking like an old man if you're not careful. Oh, age is just a number. I'm like, it, it, no, age matters. Definitely matters in the NBA. If Carmelo Anthony came in with, with scoring title, Carmelo Anthony, we're not even talking about the Nets, the NBA. It's the Lakers are going to win it all. It's all over, <laughs> you know. Age matters. Carmelo's coming in knowing he's accomplished everything in his life, okay? He only needs a title. Will it be a number one title? No, but it's better to at least get a title than nothing, right? And have some fun doing it, and that's where he'll he'll stand. So, again, young guys, old guys, we're, I think there's a nice blend there. So now it's Vogel's job to orchestrate it and hopefully the young guys make it easier for the old guys because if the Lakers come out 20 and 5 out the gate and then all of a sudden after the all-star break we're sitting at I don't know 50 and 8 uh what would be that let's say usually they play about what 48 games 
in that After range. The, yeah, they, a, little, a little bit so more than say, half. Yes. So let's say they're, I don't know, 38 and 10. If they're 38 and 10 coming out of the All Star break, and again, not with hope, I'm, I'm always factoring in no injuries, massive injuries. Uh, things are working, and they're likely going to probably win it all. I, they have enough of each thing. Only injuries and bad chemistry can make it fall apart, which I don't see a Schroeder in there. Um, I know Mark didn't help either with his kind of like mad about sitting the bench. If those things don't happen, uh, yeah, I, don't, I just don't, I, this team is going to be very good. Oh, they're going to be very good indeed. And I've said it before that with a healthy LeBron and AD, I think they could take just two and, and maybe a random listener could probably win 40 games with them. Now you add in Russell Westbrook and those three together. I expect great things, especially during the season. I think Russell's going to take over quite a bit as far as the, the load, the work share off of AD and LeBron. I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised. And in the playoffs, LeBron and AD hopefully will turn it up a notch. But we could see if he's healthy, AD pull out a year where maybe he becomes the MVP contender and LeBron at the same time, which I would love to see. But again, it for me, it's all about the matchups and the playoffs. And I think that if the, everything breaks the right way, the Lakers have could very well happen. I think we will see another championship in the not too distant future, if not this next AD, season, because well, you know, AD, things can happen. Yeah, yeah. AD, AD, uh, playing MVP ball. That would uh, it would be impossible to stop. There's there's no even if he's playing even if he. He got robbed of the defensive player of the year, by the way, in 2020. I mean, beyond robbed. Uh, even if he's, even if he's the the defensive player of the year mode. No, no. LeBron, LeBron is Tom Brady, guys. He he's not he's not going to finish. His effectiveness will obviously change. It already has, but he's he's smart enough and he's healthy enough. He's going to play another five years, whether he's. Ends it with the Lakers, I don't know. But for sure, he's going to be effective in the next two. If you can get one more title out of that, especially with it being 18, I can sit back and say this was not only a success, but LeBron is now going to have his jersey up in the rafters for sure, AD for sure, and maybe Westbrook at that point, and now you're now you're talking. Can they win a, a third? And if LeBron wins a third, they might put a statue outside Staples at that point because you know they don't, they don't have enough statues out there, right? <laughs> right. But I tell you what, it would be most welcomed. I would enjoy it. And the fact is, if anything that they can do to go ahead and put up number eighteen or even number nineteen would be just truly welcomed, w- truly welcomed by us all. The eighteen. The eight. That's the key. The most important part of this we almost had it in oh well it's not technically 08 but we would have had it in 2010 the only disappointment for me with the kobe era is if he had just beaten the celtics in that 08 series he he would have they would have passed the celtics in 2010 and kobe would have had six titles he would have beaten the celtics twice he would have probably had another uh, finals MVP. The burner and losing in 08 wasn't just the fact that we lost in the finals. Is it, it would have set a, a different mark for everything. Kobe would have beaten the Celtics in every series that he played them. He would have won six like Jordan. The Lakers would have had 17, one above the Celtics. And now, 10-plus years later... Here we are. I wish Kobe was still around, but as do I. We're 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 still existing, and we're gonna possibly see the Lakers pass whoever is first for the first time since I think it was maybe nineteen sixty two, maybe six before the before the Celtics went on that run. Yeah, so the Celtics went on a run. I think it was what was it fifty nine through sixty nine. Well, and then they won in 69 as well. Well, they won in 69, 68, uh, 
Yeah. The, they, it was basically the mid sixties. God, I, I, I'm usually good at those things. I, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank, but they haven't been the top guys since the sixties. So, it, it, you know, here we are, you know, at least for me, kid born after the whole thing and having to listen to, you know, Celtics own the Lakers. Well, I'm still alive and the Lakers will end up going one, one above. And that's, that's, that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> I don't care about LeBron's legacy, AD's legacy. Those guys already have a legacy. They're all already going to go to Hall of Fame. As a fan, you, you want you want your team, especially this team, to go, yep, we got it now. We got the top spot. There's nothing better than the number one spot. I'm a Steeler fan, too, so my team has that spot as well. Unfortunately, it's tied with the, with the Patriots, but still the top spot nonetheless. So, again, it's 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 going to be a fun season, but I do want to say this. I do want to say this. I want to congratulate everyone. Win or lose, we need to be thankful that Rob Palinka, Jeannie, LeBron, AD, all these guys and women, they're trying. They tried their butt off in every way to give this team a chance to win. Even last year, by switching from Rondo to Schroeder, by switching from Dwight to Gasol, those were all moves that were on paper better. But then again, you don't know how the chemistry is going to work until you play, and you can't really blame anyone for that. That's a that's a crapshoot. Didn't work out last year, and then in combination with the fact that AD got hurt, that's that's what, what it was really in the end. If AD doesn't get hurt, I think the Lakers win it all because of all, everybody else getting injured. But then you could say that about anybody. If Kwame, if Kwame, geez, Kawhi doesn't get hurt, the Clippers are winning it all. If Kyrie doesn't, I don't know, does that guy get hurt or does he just decide not to play? I, I don't know. But Or James Harden. James Harden, because he had that hamstring issue and he was nowhere yeah. near effective in that series. Yes, yeah, yeah. But again, if you're playing, usually I'm okay with it. If you're not in the game like Kyrie wasn't, um, yeah, you're you you, you gotta you gotta have your team, you gotta have your guys playing. Otherwise, what's the point? You're paying those guys thirty mil per, they're not showing up. Probably not gonna win. Well, I agree with your assessment on the commitments of and the committal by Jeannie Bus, Rob Palenka, and the entire Lakers organization into getting and building a winning team for this year. I mean. Yes, we didn't, you know, re-sign Caruso, and he went off to Chicago and signed that four-year, thirty-six million dollar deal. And yes, we could have, you know, had the chance and opportunity to re-sign Schroeder at a smaller deal, but we didn't even offer him after, you know, what happened with the four years, eighty-four. But this team is closing in on a two hundred million dollar team salary, and that is well over the cap. And that's getting you into luxury tax. And next year, because of it, because of what's going on with West, Russell Westbrook's forty-four plus million dollars a year, and we all know LeBron and AD are on their contracts as well, they're going to be in the repeater tax. So no one can say out there that the Lakers aren't trying to do what they can and aren't spending what money that they can to go ahead and build a winning team. No, the easiest thing they can say is, "Oh, they're old, but they have a super team." And I'm not picking on people on the internet. I'm picking on the perf- professionals, you know, the guys that have been in the business for how many years that have all those nice shows where they're always degrading their play, the players, even when, when they sometimes don't deserve it. Everybody's a choker when they lose, right? Chris Paul choked in the finals and choked in the finals. Sometimes the other team plays well too. Sometimes they're in the way they're blocking your shot, you know, Phoenix could have. There was two games in that in that in that series. They win. They win the title. It's that simple sometimes. And I think when it comes to building the championship team, it's the same thing. You're taking a chance no matter what. Hey, you're taking a chance on bringing Westbrook in to see if this might help. Got to do something. And. We're, we have to at least appreciate that they're trying, you know. They're not just throwing stuff on the wall and hoping. They're not signing Timothy Mozgov or Luol Deng. That is bad. That was I, – I, I still cannot understand what was going – I almost feel like Mitch might have just said, you know what, 
F this job. Well, Mitch is uh, doing a lot better in Charlotte right now. Whatever it was, and I, again, I wouldn't be surprised. Again, sometimes you got to be focused on not yourself. Try to focus on somebody else's mindset. It helps not only in business, but to, to understanding what's going on in, in that situation. Mitch might have said, I'm, I'm tired of this. I brought, in my opinion, I thought the Paul Gasol trade was the greatest trade in Laker history. Now, people look at me like, what about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? What about Kobe Bryant's trade? Well, no one knew who the heck Kobe Bryant was. And trading for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in his prime is not rocket science. <laughs> we were at the cusp of Kobe playing in, what was it, Pluto? Neptune? You know, he almost looked at the freaking Clippers. He needed Jerry West to talk him off the ledge. He's like, you cannot play for the Clippers. You can't play for that owner. He <laughs> right? That was before the Gasol trade, but what happened was that was kind of a building of what ended up happening in 07 when he was telling Stephen A. Smith in an interview, I'll, I'll, I'd play anywhere at that point. He wanted to go to Chicago, right? Yeah. Well, Mitch saved the Lakers and saved Kobe's legacy as a Laker. He would have had a legacy anyways. He won three titles with Shaq, but he became a he became the Laker after that, right? Yeah. And you know, sometimes those are the things that you, you want to look at, you know, and Mitch <laughs> Mitch got screwed in that Chris Paul thing. And I and my boys on at, on Lakers ball, they've heard me talk about David Stern, and I, I know it's disrespectful to to, to to berate a, a person who's not here anymore, but I am not very happy with. I, I was, I'm still upset about that because that derailed so many things. So many things. Kobe likely wins at least one more title. Chris Paul's legacy is completely different. He wins with Kobe. I, I, I Kobe had three, four years left in him to, to win titles. He would have won at least one more. I'll tell you the, what, my friend. Yeah, the one that bothers me the most, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll finish up on, on on this. So you, I know I keep running over your, your. You're good. You're good, man. But you punish your flagship franchise, and you let that piece of crap. On the in the other side of the locker room, get the guy. Really, the flagship, and every time the Lakers had a run, that guy did something. Okay, after the three P, he implemented the zone. Why? Uh, maybe because no one could guard Shaq. That cost the Lakers the four P just as much as him not getting surgery. That summer, if you watch the game, it will make sense. One of the things they used to say about the San Antonio Spurs before he brought back the zone was Popovich was so smart and so was Tim Duncan. They were able to mask a enough of the zone to guard against the Lakers to not get called on it, right? That's how smart those guys were. Well, once they got the full... Why? What were the chances that the second they implemented that zone, the, the the Spurs beat the Lakers in six the following year? Oh, well, it was Shaq and his toe and uh, and blah blah blah. Look, man, I watched every game in o in o three. There was no drama with Kobe and Shaq. No drama. I didn't hear any drama that year. And Shaq not playing in the beginning of the year had nothing to do with it. Oh, well, they were the fifth seed, and it didn't matter. Could have been the 50th seed. They go in the playoffs, they're gonna wreck shop. But it did coincide with Nick uh, Tim Duncan's best season in his career, which was 03. And the fact that they had enough to zone up Shaq to win that series. So that was the first one, right? Then what was the other one? Uh oh yeah, yeah, Chris Paul. Chris Paul would have changed everything for L.A. after what was going on with L.A. and this and that, blah, 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 blah. And then here you go. You know what? I can't, even, 
I can't keep having LA, the LA Lakers get it. Why? Oh, poor Dan Gilbert. He can't win. He loses LeBron. And then that two faced, you know what, down in Dallas, you know, Mr. Capitalism, right? The second he didn't get his way, oh, he wanted someone to stop what was going on, right? Well, to come, come to find out that he wasn't really running a good setup in Dallas. You know, he didn't know how to treat women in that business, right? Isn't that what was going on? So these are the guys judging you, right? These are the guys judging you. The only time you heard any stuff in the L.A. organization is guys not making good basketball decisions. You never heard anything about they were harassing people or doing this or doing that. All they were doing was winning, getting trades, getting stars, and that still bothered everybody. And, again, it's that's kind of the revenge every time – Things like this happen with Russell Westbrook and this and that and super team. Well, you know what? You do it then. Go ahead and do it. All 30 teams have the ability to do it. They all work within the same cap. They all working with this. Oh, well, they're in L.A., they're in Hollywood, they're this. There's plenty of places that people would love to live. Miami is one. You got the Clippers. Arizona's not a bad place to live. Texas is not a bad place to live. New York is a beautiful place if you like the big city. So, you know, again, New York has sucked for how long, you know, in between spurts. So don't don't give me that, oh, well, it's, you know, because of sunshine. By the way, I would never live in L.A., and I love the Lakers and the Dodgers. I'll never live in L.A. L.A. is a cesspool. You don't want to live in L.A. anyway. So I did get- for 25 I years. I Yeah. Uh, well, I I'd still would have wanted to go back. But, again, you can't afford it. Well, if you're going to go back to the L.A. area, just don't go in between the 405, the 10 – the 101 and the 118, the yeah. Well, when I worked in Hollywood, uh, basically trying to go every day and transport every day from Torrance to Hollywood, right in the middle, right across the street from Paramount, it was going the 110 parking lot to the 405 going nowhere. That's what we, I used to say every day. So, uh, yeah, I believe me, I know. I am very familiar, unfortunately, with the Los Angeles freeway. It's not the only bad part of it, but – I'll tell you what, Joe. Joe Soro, just been great having you on. Before we head on out, as a member of the LakersBall.com community, please describe everybody why they should check out LakersBall.com. Well, LakersBall, I used to be associated with another Laker uh, forum. Uh, it was one that I went to in 2001, uh, about a year before I graduated from college. That site was amazing. And about... Ten years after I had first signed on there, I started noticing that there was obviously a lot more people involved. And it was personal feelings and views started taking over the fun of being just us and being able to talk freely like we're friends. It became, we're going to stop your views that we don't like, you know, just like anything else nowadays where they try to cancel you with Lakers ball. You know, I've been asked several times in the last year, Joe, can you, you know, can you take it, take it down a notch a little bit? You know, you kind of get a little nuts and out of respect, you take it down. When someone comes at you with, with respect like that, you, you, you need to abide by it at that point. Whereas before, yeah, they'll give you a warning. They'll bring you back. They'll give you a warning. But it's still, you're not able to really be yourself. They're almost telling you, you got to not be you. You know, you got to be somebody else now. It's it's a different ball game now. Now you got to talk like we talk, like all the collective. No, I don't talk like anyone other than myself. Lakers ball and the community knows that. And as long as it's not belligerent, they're going to accept you. Now, whether that changes as time goes, I don't know. Because, again, the more people, it's just like L.A. versus – I don't know where I live in Temecula, right? Temecula is a town of 100,000 people versus 10 million. It's harder to live in an area of 10 million and not have some form of a communal, social type thing where everybody has to kind of do the same thing. Otherwise, it kind of is just because there's too many people versus when it's a limited amount of people, you have a little bit more individuality. And that's one thing I don't want us to lose. Now, even if we do end up getting to 10 million, Maybe we can be one of the rare places where it still keeps its individuality and doesn't reprimand people for different views, sports or otherwise. And because, you know, again, people keep talking 
we don't want to involve, you know, personal and political and all that. Well, every time I turn the TV on, I got some political thing on sports. They've, they've put it on there. So what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's part of the discussion. But again, it's, it's, it's within good levels. If you kind of sense a little bit of there might be something that somebody will retaliate with something they don't want to deal with. I get it. I get it. That's fine. I'll, I'll change the subject and go back to talking about why Russell Westbrook will be a champion in, uh, I don't know what, 10 months? Well, let's hope certainly that's the case, my friend. But I'll <laughs> tell you, you what, Joe, the door is always open for you. The red carpet is always laid out for you to come. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, purple and gold carpet is laid out for you, my friend, to come back on anytime you can. It is Joe Soro. He's part of the LakersBall.com community. I hope you get a chance to check out the great forums that they have, or I have in the past few days. I've enjoyed my time there, seeing the great conversations, and I hope you will as well at LakersBall.com. Well, again, I appreciate you having me, Gerald. I'm looking forward to many more shows, and hopefully, uh, you know, we, we can grow this thing into something much, much bigger, and uh, I promise uh, I'll, I'll get the lighting better on where I'm at next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good, my friend. All good. But yes, definitely glad to have you on. Looking forward to getting you back on. Obviously, the guys from Lakerholics.com and more communities out there. Hopefully, you will come on as well. If you get a chance, you can go ahead and hit me up if you want to be part of the show at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter or Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. Joe, thanks so much for being on. We truly appreciate it. And you're always welcome to be a part of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. Thank you.